In this video we're going to introduce reciprocal functions and we're also going to complete an example on the next slide. Now reciprocal functions have a denominator that is a variable or pronumeral and we can see two equations here that follow these conditions y equals 1 over x you'll see that our denominator is a variable x and we can also see this over on the right where we have y equals 2 over x once again the denominator is our variable x now these functions make what is known as a hyperbolic curve and we can see this at right you'll notice that you get two what are known as branches these branches are both identical to each other and they have a line of symmetry so if I was to draw the line of symmetry I'll do it in green you'll see that it goes through the diagonal of the Cartesian plane this branch here is symmetrical to the other branch over the dotted line now we are asked to label the axis of symmetry which we did in green we are also asked to label the two asymptotes on the graph at right I'm going to label one right now in blue so one of the asymptotes is on the y-axis and we can see that our branches approach the asymptote from either side they never touch it and they never cross over this asymptote you might have noticed another asymptote that goes directly over the x-axis and when you look at our two branches you can see that the graph approaches the asymptote but never touches or crosses over it on both branches well let's go to our example now example one it says complete the table of values below and then draw the graph for y equals 4 over x we can see that this is a reciprocal function because the denominator is a pronumeral or a variable in this case x so we'll start in the first column here where x is negative 8 so if we were to substitute that into our equation we would get y equals 4 over x or in this case y equals 4 over negative 8 so I'm going to bring up my calculator and I'm not going to write it as a fraction I'm just going to use divide I'm going to say 4 divide negative 8 and it gives me negative 0 0.5 let's move on to the next column now where x is negative 4 once again it's y equals 4 over x or in this case 4 divide negative 4 this time we get y equaling negative 1 so I'm going to pause and finish off my table of values I'd like you to do the same to pause and finish this off and see if you get the same as me now I finished my table of values and for those of you who actually used your calculator and tried to work these out before me you might have noticed that you couldn't plug in an x value of 0 you would have got an error when you did that and that's normal that's fine you're not allowed to divide numbers by 0 anyway let's graph this at right looking at our first column when x is negative 8 y is negative 0 0.5 now I don't have negative 8 here but I've got negative 7 and we know that negative 8 is just 1 squared to the left of that so we're just going to basically guesstimate where that goes so we'll go about here next when x is negative 4 y is negative 1 which goes about here then when x is negative 2 y is negative 2 when x is negative 1 y is negative 4 and then you don't get anything when x is 0. When x is 1, y is 4. When x is 2, 
y is 2, when x is 4, y is 1, and when x is 8, which is past the Cartesian plane, y is 0 0.5. Now when we basically join our dots and put down our curves, you'll see that you get two branches, one on each side. Let's now move on to question B. It says, what are the asymptotes for this graph? I'll do this once again in blue, and we can see that the asymptotes fall on the y and x axis again. This doesn't always happen. There will be cases where they don't fall on the x and y axis, and we'll be talking more about that in the next video. So we have our two asymptotes here. Looking back at our table of values, you might have noticed that when x equals 0, we couldn't get a y value. And when you look at your asymptotes, it starts to make sense. This asymptote here lies where x is 0. And you might remember that the branches never ever touch this asymptote and they never ever cross it. If that's the case, it's impossible to get a result when you plug in an x value of 0. Otherwise, it would have touched the y-axis. Anyway, that concludes our video introducing reciprocal functions and completing example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.